Hello guys, so this is the first of a series where we'll be focusing on assessment and management of conditions. These are general management protocols and as such may vary from trust to trust, so please follow your local guidelines. The intention is that these videos will give you an understanding of what it entails to manage a patient as opposed to teaching clinical information like my other videos. So let's get started. The scenario is as follows. Mr. Jonathan Abbott is a 78-year-old male retired with a known history of left ventricular systolic dysfunction diagnosed a month ago with a MI a year ago, uh, was admitted by ambulance in the early hours of the morning complaining of acute shortness of breath with production of pink frothy sputum. So this is a fairly straightforward scenario. A patient comes in with symptoms of acute shortness of breath and pink frothy sputum. This points to heart failure. However, before moving on to a diagnosis, it's important to consider the differentials of acute shortness of breath. Starting with the cardiac causes of shortness of breath, uh, an MI would hinder or arrest circulation. Pulmonary edema reduces lung capacity for air exchange whilst also activating J receptors due to pulmonary congestion, which in turn increase respiratory rate Breathing becomes shallow and fast as a result. Cardiac tamponade results in fluid accumulating in the pericardial space, consequently squeezing the heart, reducing ventricular filling. This reduction leads to shortness of breath. Asthma, pneumothorax, pneumonia, PE all impede lung functioning and can lead to shortness of breath as can foreign body inhalation. Metabolic acidosis can trigger cosmol breathing, seen in DKA. The body attempts to correct the drop in pH. So we have this patient, we go through the standard A, B, C, D, E of initial assessment. Um, so we begin with the airway. Most important is it clear? Um, sputum production in a left ventricular failure patient may make it difficult for them to breathe. So you can use suction if it's warranted. B is for breathing. Try to sit the patient up. Check the respiratory rate, saturations, performing a full cardio uh, respiratory examination. Findings would include uh, coarse crackles due to fluid accumulation, JVP increased due to pulmonary congestion, and respiratory rate would be increased with O2 stats decreased. Uh, at this stage, it's best to start the patient on 15 liters of oxygen via non rebreather masks. These have a high oxygen delivery percentage. The idea here is essentially to hyperoxygenate the patient in case the underlying cause of the MI uh, of the left ventricular failure is an MI. However, uh, studies have shown that mitochondrial oxygenation has been shown to drop in a hyperoxic state, resulting in worsening uh, oxygenation state. So there is a debate about whether or not to administer um, oxygen in a MI patient. So C is for circulation. Measure the pulse, blood pressure, capillary um, refill time and urine output as well as carrying out a full cardiovascular e exam. Patient would be tachycardic. The decrease in PO2 is detected via the carotid bodies which increase the respiratory rate via feedback to respiratory centers in the medulla. This also knocks on to a tachycardia. Edema results from increased movement of fluid from the intravascular to the interstitial space. In acute left ventricular failure, there is a decrease in cardiac output which causes the kidneys to activate the RAA system. This results in an increase in venous pressure and which translates to an increase in capillary hydrostatic pressure, hence the fluid struggles to move out of the interstitial compartment, causing the pitting edema. D is for disability. Here we check the GCS and uh, the blood sugar. So, um, E is for exposure. We have to always show courtesy and um, when uh, examining a patient. Um, at this stage, we should we would also carry out an abdominal examination if it's warranted, and check the pressure uh, temperature of the patient. So we are moving on to the initial management of acute left ventricular failure, LMNOP. 
So we would give a loop diuretic, fear of some mind, a 40 milligram stat via IV. This will help with the edema. This is followed by morphine, one to a maximum of 10 milligrams, tri triated to the response of the patient, and methoclopramide, 10 milligrams IV stat. N is for nitrates, and we would give 800 milligrams, two sprays, sublingual stat, but we would also uh, like the systolic BP to be uh, above 100 to avoid hypotension. O is for oxygen, as discussed bef before, and posture, um, try to get them to sit up. If a patient is on fluids, this must be stopped, and if required, DVT prophylaxis be prescribed, such as enoxaparin, depending on the stay of the patient, for example. Um, so, initial investigations include chest x-ray, looking for edema signs, such as a costophrenic angle blunting, curly beelines. With the ECG, we would be concerned with uh, ischemic changes, uh, as an MI may have brought about the left ventricular failure. An ABG will show hypoxia. Uh, carrying out an echocardiogram will allude to the cause of left ventricular failure and blood's obviously essential, very important. Um, it's also important to um, monitor bloods because um, we're administering, administering a diuretic. Okay, definitive man management. Good news for Mr. Abbott, he's now recovering. He still requires uh, close monitoring. Medications to be used in definitive management include diuretics, ACE inhibitors, and beta blockers as well. Um, ACE inhibitors themselves are indicated if a patient has an ejection fraction of less than 40%. Aldosterone receptor antagonists such as spir spironolactone are recommended in patients in class 2 to 4 heart failure with an ejection fraction of less than 35% despite treatment. Patient education is very important and it's also good to assign the patient a specialist care nurse for monitoring in the community. So that's um, all about managing acute left ventricular failure. Uh, many thanks for watching. And should you have any questions or queries, suggestions, improvements, um, please can you leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.